Okay, folks, we're back. This is part two. First part was just a brief intro to what we'll be creating and how and why. And this is all live, by the way, so I can almost feel Murphy standing behind me with a smile on his face. <laughs> but we'll just get through it. As you can see, it's slightly longer on both sides. And I've already exported this. UVs are simple. I'm done with the UV peeler. So let's get cracking on. Let's get sculpting. Here it is in Mudbox. And this is actually yeah, can be a pain to work with. Like this. You, you could flip flip these polys and just invert your stops. I'm work on the outside of it. It doesn't matter, but then you don't you, know, you don't really see what you, what's going on because your stamps are inverted. So I'll sub. I'm not going to bother. You know, normally you would subdivide this and then pull parts out to give it a bit of how would you say it more shape, a more rocky type shape before you actually do any detail sculpting on. I'm not going to bother with that. It's up to you. But right now we're just going to do the whole uh, high poly. This part is just, we're going to achieve the high poly. Cut it up and make sure it's modular. Second part will be low poly and baking. Okie dokie, let's go. I'm subdivided. Five is five enough. Let's take a look. I'm just using stops for this tutorial. Quick and nasty. Let's take it up to 100. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. It's too low. And to increase the subdivisions. And remember, the higher you go up, the more strain is on your system. So we'll start with the floor. If you like type floor, if you want to call it. It's just a stamp I need in a work, actually a work machine. Get something, get something fantastic, get a natural displacement maps, height maps from work machine. You spend a bit of time on it. Woo! <coughs> and again, here you don't need to worry about going over the edges, you just sculpt to your heart's content. Okay, so that's our yeah, cave floor. Resolution reasonable. And I'll do the roof quickly. Let's do some. These uh, actual stamps I got from the uh, Autodesk wood box. Site, you can download them. Can't remember which user created them. Thanks to him, so they are pretty cool. Okay, and you will spend more time on this. It's a given. <coughs> a drink of water. And if I sound tired today, I am. Um, I watched Interstellar last night. Didn't realize it was so long. Uh, it was a big one. Okay, this is the sides. Just quickly, just get that in there. Wasn't actually impressed with the film. The first half was pretty good, realistic. And then it all went to the shits. You really have to use your imagination. Whoa. To Enjoy the second part of that film. It was, in my personal opinion, terrible. Too far fetched. But anyway, each to their own. Each to their own. So you see, I'm not. 
That's what happens when you go outside here. I'm not bad in time on this. You will. You'll want to. Mm -hmm. I'm just using the mice as you can probably hear. I could never get used to a pen. Tried my heart out to get used to it, but didn't. Didn't do all of it. And it's not my work, so this is just a hobby for me. Okie dokie. Pretty much the same as what we had. You see how quick and nasty that is. And again, you don't have to use a cylinder type shape. You can use whatever shape you want. If you want to make a wall with bricks, using any of the brick stones, it's possible, and it doesn't matter. Same slicing procedure uh, is uh, required. Okay, so we're done here. Just export that. In the scopes. Folder. And it's a one. Okay, segment. Pretty dense, man. It's super dense. And uh, do, 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 do. I'll actually do a little poly here. We'll be coming back to that later. So remember, the lower you go down, as you can see, the less detail in. And you can use mesh decimation with uh, mesh lab. You get your low poly from your high poly, but it is an arse to work with. For rocks and stuff like that, it's flawless. But for any any shapes like this that have been decimated and all the triangulation, and then you're cutting, it's, there's a lot of cleanup work. And you got a lot of smoothing issues at the edge of your mesh, which does increase the the seams. This would be. Remember, we're going to be cutting off 512, 256, 256. So we could keep it at this, just over 4,600 4, pounds. And we can always, um, you know, lower the poly count later in Modo just by removing loops, edge loops. So I'll export that as a low poly. This is for later. LP done. Okie dokie. And now the cutting begins. And this is mesh mixer. It's roughly the same as what I had before. It's different. Actions, configure your units. Whatever grid size you're going to be using. Uh, again, I'm using Power of 2, you don't have to. As long as it's uh, your geometry. You remember, you've got to think in normal and geometry. Geometry is your low poly, your high poly is just your normals. And let's cut it. Uh, the side, these edges off, that waste that we talked about. That's not the 90. No fill. 512. And you don't want to cut it like this because then you only get this part. So you use that blue arrow. Boom. And slice. Again on the other side.
and then the modular cut. This is the important cut. Accept and export. Call it left. You can call it whatever you want. And again, as in the first part of this tutorial, Control Z a few times. And make sure you completely reset the tool. Keeps the workflow nice and clean. And cuts down the chances of any irregular artifacts. And that's our right side. done with mesh mixing. So back in the Moodle. Let's bring in each segment at a time. Mesh cut left. Centimeters. See, five twelve. There it looks on the right side, and it's left. Doesn't matter. First thing you want to do is go to other maps if you're using Moodle and get rid of that surface normal. So if you leave that in and you're doing any bacon, you'll start to see weird normal errors occurring. You just need to uh, get rid of that. And I'll move this out of that folder. And the second thing to do, I'll turn off these dimensions, is mesh clean up. Do, do this regularly when I'm, when I'm working on any high poly, or basically on any model. Make sure your mesh is clean. It also removes uh, the chances of errors or artifacts. So that's our left side with the top view. And we're going to rotate this just hitting the E key. 180. You can see doing it this way, it just even if it's high poly, it's quick. If you start using the tool handles, then everything slows down to a snail's pace. And this is the important part. I'll actually bring in the right side so I can explain it a bit better. And we'll rotate this one hundred and eighty degrees. 
minus 180, the negative side. So, it's my uh, girlfriend screaming at my daughter about something. If you can hear it. Okay. Let's. Recording. Women just don't seem to listen. Okay, I'll move this up. I'm just going to keep this a bit systematic. You can copy and paste your right side directly into the left and work it that way. But it's sometimes better if you do things systematically, structurally. It can rule out uh, issues that can arise. So you can immediately see these, uh, this is now modular, this right side and this left side. But you can see the problem. And, uh, before you join these up, you see the mess in the middle. This is what you have to, this is what you have to remove. It's a complete mess. But uh, easily solved. Top view. Before you join these, lower your grid settings and find a middle way, middle man, for these top edges. You could pick these two, but this looks a lot more even. So I just I usually just use the top. I've been using the top. Top side. This is pretty snug, three down, but I'm going to go two squares down, two positions. So just focus on the left side. And you want to snap to vert on because this is the most accurate. And we're going to move it up to here. I'm just using W, transform tool. Get right down to that part. The two handles will come up. And we're just going to make sure you're snapping on, of course. Just move that part, snap that part right to that grid. Left side sorted, right side again. W in Moodle, transform to It's extremely important that that is really centered there. Otherwise, it won't be modular. And you have to do this first before you join the two segments. If you don't do that, then your segment just uh, won't line up. The normals won't line up. Because you're high poly, you're not going to actually do any modular building with it. So that's uh, both sides are lined up nicely. Now you could go on and just go through the method of cleaning this up, but I like to test it to see if this is in fact modular. So copy these. Copy the right side, paste it into the left side. Remember, you can't bridge two different uh, models that are on two different layers. They have to be on the same layer. 
in Moodle, anyway. Delete that, we don't need that anymore, now we've got them both. Okay, I want to test this, we're going to use Marmoset to test this, to see if this is uh, actually a 1K modular normal map, or high poly. This is an OBD. I go into my texture. I call it test. Mm. And you don't need UVs or anything, just uh, throw it into. Marmoset, you're just throwing in the Marmoset. Whatever background you want to use, it doesn't really matter. Uh, import, import the test. Import it twice. Yeah, well, that's uh, not very clear. Um, cathedral. Mm. Nice. And put it again. And don't worry about this middle part, we're going to fix it. It's the left and the right. Let's move that out. Go to your transform. And 1, 0, 2, 4. So you can see there is a slight seam here. But I honestly don't think it's much to worry about and the whole system is slow in red down there. As I'm recording this. But it's good enough. So I'll quickly terminate you. You'll probably hear your graphics card going a bit mental. <coughs> the marmoset, and don't forget I've got Modbox and Modo and Marmoset and I'm recording this at the same time. So let's fix this up. As I said in the intro, you can see it's a mess here. Triangulated mess. Huge gaps. <coughs> you can take this edge. Make sure it's completely selected. Sometimes it's not, and then you have to move another edge loop further. Split it. And this is actually, folks, the, the most tedious part of the whole procedure. If there's anything that will go wrong, <laughs> it will go wrong here. Okay, same again on this side. One, two, three. And Murphy is leaning over my shoulder right now. I can almost feel him. So we'll undo that and see what happened. You see? That's the problem <coughs> that happens sometimes. So we take another edge loop, uh, 
And that's uh, going right around the circumference, no problems there. Split that. Yes. And before you bridge it, clean it up. You maybe have to clean it a few times. And as you can see, everything at this part of the procedure slows down because it is a high density mesh. But it's uh, still workable. And as I said before, if your gap's too big here, if you really take a big chunk out, the bridge tool isn't going to work. And if you've got like an L-shaped square, you can't bridge something like from at the bottom and then up to the top, you have to do it in segments. If it's uh, just one, like an L-shape, if you've just got the floor and a, and a wall at the side, that's just the typical behavior from the bridge tool. But if you, if you use Moto for a while, then you know. Uh, segments, I'm going to Stick it up to 12. Curve, make sure you've got the curve on. Tension down to zero. And apply. There you go. It's bridged. You want to quickly check it because some of the Polys can be flipped using the bridge tool. This it's worked pretty pretty well. And as you can see, there's uh, a lot of differences here in height, but it doesn't matter. Um, okay, let's even these up. We don't need that one. Yeah, we don't need that edge. We don't need that. And we don't need that. We just get rid of them. Using the backspace in Modo. And I'll do another clean up. <coughs> and this, as I said before, is the most tedious part of the whole process. And if you've seen a normal set, you do get a slight seam, don't worry about it. So it's barely unnoticeable. Do it again just to make sure that it's clean before I triangulate it. Okay. So it goes here, polys, lists, and modem. By vertex and select your quads. Shift T, triangulate, the selected poly, not very evenly. I should add, see, Muru just uh, does some weird. Rotation on some of these edges. And then another cleanup. Make sure it's nice and clean because we're now going to export this into Mudbox. So that's it. That's your 1K modular segment. And we have to fix that uh, horrible scene which we've created. So I'll just uh, export this in OBD. Stick it into the sculpted mesh because there's a scope to fix.
Okie dokie. Just turn that off. I can actually you can delete this now. Check it first that it works, of course. It doesn't matter. A bit wonky here. Okay. Let's see. I can now delete this. It does add weight and stress to your system. Open. And we're going to go in and smooth this out and get rid of that seam. So brush size and be in mud box. You could probably I uh, can't see um, the problem doing this in ZBrush. This should work in ZBrush actually. The same technique as long as you can uh, import tries, of course. Triangulated mesh, as I think you can. Uh, go to the smooth, smooth tool, stick it down really low, I've got it to 0.10, and just smooth this uh, seam. As you can see, it pulls nicely together. The more time you spend here, the neater it is. It's a given, you gotta, you know, you gotta be realistic. I'm just flying through this to get. This is the way we done. You can see even, even the, the edge differences here in the height. So it's still not really a problem. Let's see if that's something perfect to find out. So I never thought I would be in a sculpting program fixing seams. <laughs> and a warning to you, do not, do not go over this edge with your tool, which I've done a few times uh, accidentally while using a stump, went over it and Hard the hell that was that was a nice clean modular piece and it had a uh, very little noticeable seam and then suddenly it was this big seam appeared. And it was because of me, it was my fault. So you can see it just cleans out of it nicely. Without much effort. In my opinion. And some of you might not have the patience for this. And there's several other ways of, for making uh, modular. I'll turn off the wireframe if this is annoying. There's other ways to make modular parts. This is just another one. It's the same, uh, how would you say, it's just like a tileable texture in the end, you know. You can uh, add, smooth out other parts here, these big noticeable parts, and add more variation to get different normal maps out, so it doesn't look so repetitive, you know, using the same map over and over again derive as many normal maps as you want. It's in your game engine, you're using material instance anyway. 
Which will cut down on your draw calls. And the more time you spend on this, you can make it neater than what I'm doing. You could really uh, create some nice, interesting, uh, detailed, modular normal mobs. And this should work on bricks. And I think you'd even get away with uh, panels. Even if it's a space station panel ship, whatever. Or if you, even if you want to do some damage walls, that are modular, you could, you could see the procedure applies. I don't see why not. As long as your normal map is uh, modular with, uh, and the seams aren't noticeable, and it, uh, pretty valuable for doing a lot of different types of level art. So we're pretty much done here. So it's a nice smoothed out seam. And here's the problem that I just explained to you. I'm just you I'm going to just stomp this in for speed. Uh, you've seen it before when the stomp just goes in your face, fills up the whole screen, it means you're going over this edge. And you do not want to do that. You could, um, it might actually be advisable to freeze. You know, using uh, the freeze tool and color this edge in so you it'll cut down the chances of that you do go over it. It's just a matter of painting. And you could use the mirror tool and to paint both sides for you. But for this uh, tutorial, we'll just do it quickly and I'll try to be as careful as I can. Okay, we had imprint, that KV, whatever type of material. Maybe drop down, won't make it too strong. So it's already detail there. Right. And of course, hey, this is what we do not want, because I've just went over the edge there, and sometimes it can flip around and destroy those edges for us. It is better if you stay as level as, po as possible. And I should actually be using a layer for this, so if something does go wrong, then I can go back and fix it. But again, it's just, uh, you get the drift. Ceiling. Again, zoom in a bit so I'm not uh, taking the risk of going over it. Edge. It's a bit wonky. You can see it's Organic stuff that works pretty, pretty much as it should. With very little effort, and that's what I like. And uh, you know, better watch this. Actually, yeah, but it would do you because. You could call it the lazy man's art. <laughs> and again, you know, you're getting this repetition here, so you'll be spending more time on this to make it look more uh, natural. So that will do there. It's good enough. 
Maybe I have one in here. I get rid of that. See, it's, it just removed that repetition. You've created another one, of course, but you can smooth parts out here. I could stick a bit of a uh, be careful here. Remember, do not go over these edges. You can see the seam is, yeah, visible because I haven't really spent any time you know, completely covering it up. But you get the idea. Yeah, so we'll leave it at that. Let's export this. Um, my poly fixed. There you have it. It's not like, whoa, fantastic. Because I've uh, I rushed it. And uh, notice a uh, note on this. If you get all these uh, jaggedies, annoying jagged edges, this will show up on your normal map, by the way. And remember, this is just like another uh, geometry, so you can't just go to, hold on a second, this is 9 high poly. Good first hex map, set vertex normals, and smoothness at 100%. And that will smooth that over, and you don't get those blocky tries. It will actually show up on your normal map. And on the last part, the third and last part of this, sorry, I see they're gone. You um, will do the low poly and bake this side. So that's pretty much the workflow. I'll do one more check in turn off mud box. Export you. Another check in Marmoset. And this working with high polys requires a bit of patience. Patience is a virtue. But the end result is uh, very nice. And the devil is in the details, after all. And you've also got uh, opportunities to... You can use X normal if you want to do your bacon. You can do your bacon in... Uh, mud box with your high low and poly and low poly. I'm just, I've just been using uh, Modo with uh, shading normal and converting it with X normal to a uh, synced normal map that works perfectly in Unreal 4. Okay, so this is uh, our one segment, we'll see if it's 1K segment.
I think it's actually a uh, screen recorder. It's causing the issue here. Marlon says. Drop down the bell somewhat. See if I can find the mouse. There's where our steam is. Already unnoticeable. Still there, but barely unnoticeable. She should have checked that it did tell on the left side. Which it does. And that's a wrap, folks. Next part will be the end, the baking, sorting out the low poly, baking it, and I might even just do a quick texture uh, and quicksel. Okay, thanks for uh, watching, and a note on my microphone, I did my best to uh, clean up the audio, and this is a lot, I know there's a lot of hiss and home and background noise, but I did my best, I'm using a crappy, uh, one of those old type uh, microphones in about a few years ago. But anyway, you get the drift. Okay, until next time, bye.